Hello everybody, in this video we're going to cover server machine that is a feature of DSS Pro. If you are watching, if you are watching me for the first time, I have developed a framework that is used for massive multiplayer online games and for metaverse projects. So practically that framework is supposed to handle the scaling of the players in the cloud by distributing those players and load balancing those players on dynamically instantiated shards so that it can keep up with demands including all the uh, let's say social services and server communication so today we will be covering something that i have never covered although i have stated it inside the documentation for dss pro and this is, is practically this stands for uh, this the dynamic uh, server subsystem and there are three tiers this is the upper tier which is called dss pro so if you don't know anything about server machine i would highly advise you to search the internet because there are a lot of resources out there that explain server machine but on its simplest form it's practically a way that allows multiple shards to communicate with each other so that the player across those shards can interact seamlessly so this video is going to be split into two parts one part i'm gonna demo uh, a demo that I have already developed for a certain interview search for a certain position so that I said that I might record that demo and share it for you as an update and the second part is gonna cover a bit of technicalities for this project and by the way the whole server meshing stuff is running using uh, DDS a data distribution uh, service and part in particular I'm using fast right now so um enough speaking and let's get started so here we have two characters those characters are actually placed in two different shards in the same zone this one is called zone a we have shard 3 and shard 4 don't give much attention to the actual shard id the whole idea is that they are two different shards so the players are not on the same server shard um those players are supposed to be able to see each other and are supposed to be able to interact similarly there are objects here that you can or um let's say uh, a couple of things that you can interact with and you might have already noticed that there are two color codings there is the kind of greenish color uh, everything that is greenish means it's with you on the same shard Everything that is not green, maybe let's say purple or blue, means it is on another shard. You don't really know which exact shard, but it is on one of the other shards. They are actually broadcasted across all the shards and you can interact with those actors even if they are not on the same shard where you are located. And right now I'm gonna demo that. We have two things. We have a pickable object and we have an object that is simulating to this first of all you can see that if i move uh, actually the animation and everything else is replicated across the servers and what you are seeing is not the actual actor it is a shadow for the actor so if the character to the right moved you can see that it is moving uh, in the in the uh, for the player too you can see the actual character moving but actually you are interacting with a shadow this shadow just con contains the um, visual aspects of the character and it cannot call RPC it does not contain any game logic it is just meant to be used so that as a proxy to call RPC on the awning server speaking about awning server each actor is owned by just one server and then replicated for all the other server shards so in this case if I'm playing with the one that is number two and I'm approaching this, this is not owned by uh, the shard where I am located because the color is not actually green, but I can still interact with it. So for instance, we have, we can pick that object or we can randomize it. By randomize it, I mean change the, uh, change the uh, shape and color and then change this number here. This number stands for the weight that's going to affect uh, the player speed when it is gonna be picked first of all let's try to pick and randomize one that is on uh, the same 
shard and they're moving with the other player I'm going to try to randomize it from here if I press R okay I'm looking at the same actor if I press R here it got changed and it is replicated keep in mind that now this change took place on the shard ID um, 3 and replicated to shard ID 4 throughout server meshing but what if we interacted with the actor that is on shard ID 4 from the player that is on shard ID 3 it is actually possible because it, this actor that is a shadow can uh, can act as a proxy so that you can call RPC on the awning shard. Now I will try to randomize it. Okay, practically uh, I approach it and then pressing R, I can randomize it. I'm randomizing it from the character 2 that is not located on the same shard. I can even pick it. But before picking it, maybe we can try the physics simulated stuff. Actually, even if it is not located on your uh, shard, you can interact with it. Perfect. Similarly, now we can maybe pick that actor. Also, on the other server, you can see that this player is picking that actor. So practically, those two servers are 100% matched in a way that they can call RPC between each other. They can serialize and deserialize and share data and the actual replication is a data replication so if nothing happened nothing is shared perfect now moving on to the second uh, zone in the second zone i have i have um 300 ais that are actually distributed on six servers several instances if we go to our server you can see that there are in total eight server instances in which six are running AIs and two are running the first zone that contains the interactable objects. Um, let's state FPS. Okay. Now we are sh showing the FPS statistics and it is running real stable. The ping is just 18 milliseconds. Keep in mind here you have 300 AIs. So if you would want to run 300 AIs in this small space on single server instance, it would have been destroyed. It's the, the ping is going to be maybe around 60, 80, I don't know, depends on uh, the actual uh, AI. But here, in, this is a simple AI that is just moving in real time. And actually, in fact, you see the green and you see the purple. The green are with you on the same shard and the purple are on the other shards. The green and purple they are aware of each other and they can still planning pretty well without issues whatsoever also for instance maybe i can move with this player oh, pop, pop. okay uh okay perfect so um Actually, now those two characters, player to the player's characters, are on the same shard. That's why they both have the same and um, green color. Yeah, maybe that's it from the actual uh, demo. As you can see, there are two actors here. There is the actual pickable actor and there is the shadow. As we have already mentioned, shadow is a proxy. So practically it does not contain the game logic. It does not contain the game logic. It can call proxy RPCs on the awning server of the actual actor. And um, in the principle, it does not count as an actual actor in the sense of the resources that is required to handle that actor. That's why it's really beneficial to distribute your actors on multiple uh, shards. So now let's speak technicalities about server meshing what you can do with server meshing server meshing will allow you to serialize and share actors across shards it allows you to call rpc across shards and it allows you to track the movement of the actual actor including the animation for sure uh, that means actors across two different shards can interact with each other and that is in principle it is possible because 
each actor is held by one server this server is the actual one that is controlling the actor and replicating everything for the, the all other shards so speaking about rpc we have two kinds of rpc we have the multicast and we have the one-to-one -one rpc multicast is going to allow the actual actor to call an event on all the shard on all the uh, the shadows across all the shards so for instance here if we go to the pickable when we press randomized the logic of randomizing the actual actor is gonna take place on the on in server and then there is a multicast event that is going to be called on all the shadows of course you can share data so uh, you can call events that takes whatever kind of data you want this data is going to be serialized as many arguments as you want there's no problem whatsoever now this is gonna call the actual uh, randomize event on the shadow that's gonna set the actual variables and change the shape and the actual logic for generating the values for those variables are being executed on the on in server similarly now assuming that we want to call an event from the shadow to the actual actor it is also possible and you can have as many uh, arguments as you want um, so in this situation we are calling destroy me event this event is going to be executed on the on in server and the result is going to be replicated in case there is anything to replicate there are two ways to replicate data either you can call a multicast event such as this so that it can update the value across all the shadows or there is the um, event that is called replicate and it's actually going to replicate the actual actor to all the uh, to all the shards and now speaking about replication serialization and deserialization specifically anything that is prefixed with mesh is going to be taken into consideration automatically whether it is defined in C++ and Blueprint in this stage you can have your actor in C++ and Blueprint uh, and fully server meshed the only requirement is to implement the network meshed component and that's it then the server is going to be shared and tracked across all the um, shards now throughout the meshed component you can understand whether this is a shadow or an actual actor so if is remote is actually true that means it is a shadow it's not controlled by this chart you can get the unique GID for this actor and this is a network GID for that actor so it is practically the same across all the shards including for uh, the actual actor and all the shadows for that actor also you can get the on in uh, server GID the uh, GID of the server that owns the actual actor assuming that you are a shadow I guess I have covered everything um, I'm not quite sure if there's something else to be covered in general I'm going to create a new uh, video I'm gonna record a new video that contains a demo that actually explains everything in details this is just a really fast video that I've decided to record out of nowhere to share some um, progress so I guess that's it for today see you on another video